So after Trisha Paytas made a series of threats saying that she was gonna make a bunch of videos exposing people like Jason Nash, David Dobrik, Jeff Wittick, and the rest of the vlog squad, she had a change of heart. And as usual, there's a lot that we can learn from this. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to take this mess and turn it into a message, all right? So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I don't see what the point is in watching all this stuff go on with our favorite YouTubers or even just YouTubers in general and not try to see what we can learn from it. So yeah, real quick before I get started, make sure because it is almost the end of the month, my brand new book canceled inside YouTube cancel culture. There is a free version available until the end of the month at my website. So that is down in the description, down in the pinned comment below. All right. So yeah, let's talk about this. Um, Trisha Paytas, like everybody was kind of waiting in anticipation, but she had a change of heart. So as I jump into this, uh, disclaimer, in case you missed it yesterday, go watch the video I did yesterday. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Chris. No, I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm not a licensed psychologist. I am a certified life coach, but like most of you, I'm a flawed human being, and something I try to do is better myself and improve myself and learn from other people's successes and mistakes, all right? And the other thing I want to say before I get started, like, I do empathize so much with Trisha. It seems, it seems like people in the vlog squad did her dirty, all right? So I just want you to keep that in mind, but I'm gonna kind of reflect on this and share some of my own personal experience and hopefully you can relate to it as well, all right? So anyways, she released this series of uh, Instagram stories today. Hey guys, we just made it to Chicago. Um, I just wanna check in with you guys. I know I went on a little bit of a rant yesterday. I just, you know, I'm just gonna defend myself. Like, I, when I feel the need to defend myself. As far as other things, I always feel like, like the situation when it calls for, I will speak my truth. Um, and until it's called for, then I'm just gonna try and keep living. I was, I'm, I was living my best life. I'm still really happy and in a good place. So I'm trying not to go backwards. I've been working daily to overcome some like crazy sh demons that had come out earlier in this year, and I've. I've been working really hard on myself and my happiness, my journey, my own mental health and all that stuff like that. So I've been trying to just like let things go and breathe things out. But at the end of the day, like I'm not going to get walked over either. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm glad that she had a change of heart on this. And and yeah, like I said, like I, I definitely empathize with her and in no way do I want to minimize her experience or what she felt or any of you out there if you have felt this way right but we do need to take a look and see how we react to situations right because i am somebody who used to continuously get extremely emotional right now i get emotional sometimes but it's way better than it used to be all right and the most we can all try to do is just try to improve on a regular basis. Like something I always ask myself whenever I react or even when I respond to a situation, I ask myself this question and I suggest you do the same, right? Was my reaction or response to that situation proportionate to what actually happened? You see what I mean? Because some of us freak out, right? And then our mind will try to justify it in some cases. But anyways, like, the first thing I want to touch on is like, you guys, we got to learn from this. We have to learn from this, okay? First, we had Jeffree Star. Then we had Josh Evans. Now we have Trisha Paytas. And this has happened a wide range of times on YouTube. And what am I talking about? Each one of these three people in a very emotional place told the entire community and all of them have massive followings and said, you know what? I'm going to expose some people. That's what I'm gonna do. Jeffree Star said he was gonna expose James Charles. He came back with his video saying, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do that. Josh Evans, in an emotional state, he said he was gonna expose Colleen Berenger, uh, <laughs> um, Trisha Paytas, Shane Dawson. Then he came back and said he had a change of heart. Now, you have Trisha Paytas saying that she was gonna do that to David Dobrik, Jason Nash, 
Jeff Whittick and the vlog squad, and then she had a change of heart. So it's like, learn from this, all right? Like you, you're able to witness this on YouTube. People who threaten things in a very emotional state, but you're seeing it on a public scale. Like Trisha's video in less than 24 hours or maybe a little bit more than 24 hours has 1.1 million views. All right, so like when you do that, or when I do that and we get into that emotional state, well, if I do it on YouTube and I'll touch on that in a little bit, um, but when we do that like in our regular life, it's in front of friends, family members, coworkers, you know, like we, we blow up and we freak out. So what can we do to work on these things, right? And there's a slew of things that we can work on. Like for example, um, some things that I do is meditation, right? I journal, I vent to my beautiful girlfriend Tristan, or my therapist, or a friend, somebody in my support group. But anyways, like, I was uh, I was volunteering at a rehab the other day, and we, and we were actually talking about this subject. <laughs> Not Trisha Paytas and what's going on with the vlog squad, but this subject in general, right? So for example, like when I first got sober, I had so many anger issues, and I would lash out, and I would freak out on so many people. And something that I learned is this, the mind wants you to release anger, all right? And this is true. We can't just hold it in and bottle it in. The lie that our brain tells us is that we need to release it on that person, right? It tells us that we need to freak out on our significant other or our mom or our dad or our boss or our coworker or whoever it is who hurt us. The reality is it just wants to get out. And there are so many different ways to do that. Like I mentioned, journaling, venting to a friend. Like something I used to tell my clients is, like before you freak out on a loved one, call and vent to me. Because I promise you, I promise you, if you're watching this, if you have an issue with getting like really emotional and like angry, I promise you if you just vent it out, whether to a friend or in a journal or your therapist, I promise you, you'll feel better afterwards, all right? Like I remember a while back, Trisha actually was debating on uploading a video and she said on Twitter, I, I can't remember if it was when the Nikocado Avocado thing was going on, but she said, I'm gonna sleep on it, right? And that's something that we gotta do, like you guys, like with the mistakes that I've made, like whoo hoo hoo, I could have made a million more if it wasn't for like my girlfriend Tristan and just telling me like, hey, how about you hold off on that? You know what I mean? Or my therapist or my support group. So the last thing I kinda wanna talk about is the personal responsibility that we all, can work on, right? There's something that I'm still working on. I hope a lot of you like kind of see where I'm going with this and we all work on this, all right? So I'm gonna talk like, if Trisha were my friend, all right? Or if you were my friend and you were going through this, or this is what I would hope somebody would say to me and I do have a lot of people in my life who do say these things to me, right? So anyways, like you saw in that uh, the Instagram story earlier, Trisha talks about how she was sticking up for herself and everything like that, and trust me, like don't get it twisted. I do think that we need to stick up for ourselves. I do think we need to set up boundaries. But, like when Trisha got sober, she talked about 12 step programs. And I'm gonna tell you from my experience in 12 step programs, something that my sponsor in the program taught me was, I always gotta look at my part, right? I always gotta look and say, did I set off a series of events. So this isn't like a, a, a bash at Trisha, but like I would have to sit back and reflect on this or I would tell my friend to sit back and reflect on this and say, what did you do? Like, did you do anything? Cause it's not always we do something, but I would say, did you do anything to set off this chain of events? So Trisha says that she was responding to Jeff, but from Jeff's perspective, he was responding to Trisha because Trisha has gone around sharing this Starbucks story on a bunch of different podcasts and interviews and Jeff finally said something and then she snapped, right? So when we're able to kind of calm down for a second, we could say, oh, well maybe he was just responding to what I started in the first place. You see what I mean? So there's kind of this personal responsibility, like, like I said, I'm not saying she shouldn't have been upset by anything that Jeff said, but 
part of us has to realize that we set that ball in motion. Like for example, would Jeff have ever talked about that incident had Trisha not talked about it multiple times? You see what I mean? So I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong in this, but when we're working on ourselves and trying to learn and grow, we have to ask ourselves, what can I control? What can't I control, right? I cannot control what other people do or say, but I can, work on trying to control what I say and what I do. You see what I mean? And yeah, like she talks about, like she gets emotional sometimes still and she, you know, goes off and like, it seems like she does have some awareness around it, but like, check it out, you guys. Like, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm a flawed person too, right? I am just trying to get better. Something they taught me in 12-step programs is progress, not perfection. And if you knew me seven years ago, you'd be like, whoo hoo, Chris, you come a long way. But I get it, like even with all the work I do on myself, sometimes I get emotional and I do something stupid, right? But like I said, we can't justify our actions. We gotta realize where we screwed up. Like for example, a couple months ago on Twitter, I clapped back at Taylor Nicole Dean and it was very stupid and immature what I did, but my emotions got away from me in that moment. That is why I have apologized to her personally for that. You see what I mean? Rather than going and trying to justify it and pointing the finger and saying, well, here's what you did. You see what I'm saying? So I am still learning from my mistakes and I hope that all of you kind of check in with yourself and as you watch these things go on, we see what, where we can improve, tweak some things and try to benefit from these experiences so we don't make the same mistakes in the future. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. Don't forget my brand new book, Cancelled. You can get yourself a free copy until the end of the month down on my website. It's down, linked in the description and the pinned comment below. There's also an audio book available if you want to check that out. And pretty soon, I'm going to start working on my next book. Should hopefully come out in the next month or two. All right, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody who buys my books and supports the channel and other ways. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.